One of the things that we enjoy doing is visiting wildlife preserves, animal parks, aquariums, just about any place that features animals and wildlife. So in this video, we're going to share some tips that we put together for visiting these type of attractions. Whenever we visit any type of wildlife park, zoo, or aquarium, the first thing I do is look for any type of discounts. Groupon's a big place that I go to look for discounts, but there's other sites like that that offer those type of discounts. Yeah, and you can check the website of the attraction that you're going to and find out if they offer uh, discounts on certain days. For example, Veterans Day or maybe Father's Day, Mother's Day, or maybe just a general discount for seniors on certain days. And some days are actually just totally free, like the first Tuesday of the month or something like that. So be sure to check for certain day discounts. Yeah, and don't dismiss the idea of a membership, a yearly membership, especially if you have a home base that you stay for uh, some part of the time and then travel the rest of the time. You may get a membership at a zoo or aquarium in your area because those often offer reciprocal discounts with other zoos and aquariums in other cities and other states. So if they offer a discount in another area that you plan to visit, it could be a good deal. So there's a few gear items that we like to bring along with us when we go to these parks. One of them is a hat. And not just for obvious reasons, to keep the sun out of our eyes or the sun off of our face or to protect our body, but also there are sometimes birds <laughs> that we go into bird exhibits or things like that and they will land right on your head and they have no problem using the bathroom there. Yeah. So we like to have our hats with us. Another thing is hand wipes or hand sanitizer, um, especially if you're going to be, um, you know, petting or feeding any kind of animals. You, they usually have something there, but just having a little extra hand wipes or wiping a table or some place that you're going to sit, always a good idea to have some hand wipes. Yeah, I agree. We, we always bring those pretty much everywhere we go anyway. <laughs> we have some in our bag, pocket pack or purse. Uh, another thing is a sit pad. Now this is something that people might not normally think about bringing to a place like this, but it can come in handy if you are not wanting to sit on something hot or something cold or maybe it's uh, filthy or yeah. something like that. Or you just want some comfort. And these sit pads can uh, roll up really easily. Some of them are inflatable, some are self-inflatable. Uh, they're they're really convenient to, to bring along. We've, we've seen that a lot of people that have come with us and then we will take them from time to time. So that's a good thing. Yeah, another thing is a small pair of binoculars. A lot of times the exhibits are very large and the animals are a long ways away. So if you've got a little pair of binoculars with you that you can kind of zoom in and get a better look, that can be really helpful. Yeah, definitely. And another item that I talk about quite a bit is bringing some type of cell phone charger. That could be one that you just plug into the wall. Some places will actually have USB jacks now, but uh, we often will bring the wall charger, or if not, we'll bring some type of battery supply pack. Now these come in really handy if you're taking a lot of photos and videos with your cell yeah. phone. As you know, that battery can go down really fast. A lot of cell phones don't allow you to, to carry extra batteries for them, so you have to charge it somehow. So either a wall charger, USB, or the uh, power packs just definitely come in handy. Yeah, and finally, always bring enough water and either snacks or lunch, whatever's appropriate to the place you're going. Some places will uh, not allow outside food, but if they do and you can bring your lunch, they may have you know some limited options or very expensive options. So 
if we can bring our lunch, we will do that, and uh, that really helps out a lot. Yeah, it definitely does. And the water bottles are good to, to bring something that's uh, reusable like that because it keeps your water cool all day long. We yeah. like that a lot, especially yeah, was, where we're at in the sun today. Yeah, for sure. Another thing to consider when visiting these type of attractions is the timing of your visit. Uh, maybe you like to see the baby animals and they are going to be born in the spring, in the summer, and so maybe that's when you want to visit. Um, some attractions may be closed for the winter or things like that. We've so, ran into that a few times. Yeah. So not only the time of year, but also the time of day. Um, a lot of times the animals are much more active, maybe in the morning or the evening. So the feeding times. Yep, timing your visit when they, when they first open or maybe getting there closer to when they close is a better time depending on the type of animals that you're seeing and the, the climate that you're in. <laughs> yeah, and also consider the schedule for shows. Uh, there's certain times of the years that they'll put on certain type of uh, shows or certain times of the day and then there's also times when they'll schedule to bring animals out and sometimes that's just seasonal depending on the type of animal but it's really nice because sometimes you can get up close and personal with them yeah so there's nothing more frustrating than going to see animals and not seeing any animals so <laughs> if you think about the timing of your visit you may have a better chance of seeing more So here are some photo tips. One of the things that you're going to want to do is turn off the flash on your cell phone or your camera. One of the reasons is because if you're taking pictures of animals that are behind glass, you're just going to get a great big flash reflection on the glass and you're not going to be happy with the way that your photos turn out. Another reason is that it could be distracting to the animals. A lot of times the animals will just uh, not like that, much like us humans. You know, you go come up to us and do a bright flash in front of us. It, it might uh, just uh, ruin your pictures that way too. So turn off that flash. Another thing is to remove the barriers that are in your way. A lot of times it's nice if you're at, if you're at one of the types of wildlife parks where they're in uh, behind cages or fences or things like that. Uh, some parks will have little uh, holes that they've designated in the fencing so that you can actually get photos without the fencing in, in it so that you can see the animal and not just a fence. And besides, I think the animals look a lot better in the photos when they're not all, all caged yeah. in, even though they are. <laughs> yeah, and some of the photos you want to remember to get is a good shot of the entrance. So you have the, um, you know, kind of the beginning of your scrapbook or your slideshow or whatever you're going to um, post for that visit and then the next thing is you want to get a group shot of everybody that's there. Yeah, we sometimes forget that. Yeah, that's a we really do good and it's a really good way to remember, you know, who was with you at that spot and you shared that memory with. And then another thing that I like to do is take a picture of the interpretive sign or the yes, identification sign for that animal because notoriously I will get home and think what was the name of that really cool animal that we saw and then if I have that picture there right with it then I can identify yeah, what definitely. that was. And if you're <laughs> posting things on social media you can go to the sign and, and put a little bit of facts with it. It just it just is so much better that way. <laughs> yeah. Another thing to do is the photographer's secret yeah. and that is take a lot of photos. Just take more photos than you ever think you'll need and that's a pretty good rule for any time you're taking pictures. Take a lot of them that way you can just go through them and find the ones that turn out exceptional well with everybody looking the right way or the animal looking at the right way and then you can go ahead and get rid of the rest so take a lot of photos This tip has to do with respect. 
not only respecting the place that you're visiting and the animals there, but the other people that are there One another. enjoying the experience as well. So follow the rules, obey the signs. If it says to stay on the trails, stay on the trails. Um, don't feed the squirrels, don't feed the squirrels. There's a reason that they have that yeah, sign there. A, a lot of times they don't want you feeding the animals because then they'll come overhead and the, 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 all the birds will sit overhead wanting to get fed and they'll just defecate on all the places that you sit for food. And it, it makes them sick. It's not in their yeah. diet. There's, you know, there's, there's good strong reasons why a lot of these parks have rules. They, they have them there because they really help. Yeah, they do. And so everybody will have a better time if we all just follow the rules that they have there. And, and along with that is, is your trash, you know, pick up your trash, especially when you're in an animal place because the trash can be very dangerous to certain animals. Um, so, you know, being very mindful of that and, you know, keeping your, your food in a, in a place that they're not gonna get into it. If you're someplace where there's really smart birds that like to get into your lunch or whatever, make sure that that's secured and yeah. and pick up your trash when you leave yeah and, and definitely another form of respect is to consider your noise that you're making at times we we all get it carried away sometimes and we maybe don't uh, think about the environment that we're in we have literally been in the middle of the wilderness in Yellowstone and had people using uh, air horns yeah. to communicate with each other I mean those types of things they disrupt nature they they scare off the animals they they, they disrupt one another you know try to keep your uh, conversations uh, going the way that uh, you know is in keeping with what you're doing you know we've had people standing next to us when we're filming uh, such things as baby um, uh, what were they sea, sea otters, otters yeah. and and they were standing next to us with their speaker phone on yeah. their uh, on their uh, telephones and and talking to to people about different subjects that don't even have to do with what uh, is going on and so it can be very disruptive uh, in in that sense um, what what are some of the other things regarding noise that we we've encountered it's just it, 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 just the, uh, the cell phone thing is a really big thing to me. I mean, if you have to take a cell phone call, you have to take the call. But, do you, you know, do you don't have to put it on speaker and, you know, talk so loudly that, you know, you're scaring off the animals and disrupting everyone else's experience. So that's a, a really big thing that, <laughs> that gets to me. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, you know, if you're, if you're taking selfies or, or photos of things, it's unlikely that somebody's going to come and jump in front of your photo. <laughs> picture I know that people can photobomb and stuff like that but most people aren't going to come and go like this in front of your picture when you're taking pictures at places now consider people that are doing video yeah if you come up and stand next to people who are filming video they probably don't want you talking about the corns on your feet and your indigestion or the traffic in LA or things like that when you're observing wildlife so just kind of be mindful of one another you know I, I'm telling you this and I know you're sitting there thinking yeah I know that I go through it all the time with people but you know it's it's just it's just respecting one another and we know you know what we're talking about so just keep all those things in mind and it'll just make the experience so much better for all of us Those are some of the tips that we felt are worth mentioning. Maybe some of these will come in handy when you visit animal parks, wildlife preserves, or zoos. If you have any that you would like to share, please feel free to share them in the comments section for this video. And don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.